look really cool today. Really? I mean, you look edgy. What? It's a house of CB. You I hate this it. shirt. It's I know like, you it's, hate it's this shirt. Like you're styling. You're moving and grooving today. I know you hate this shirt. I love it. You told me a long. Well, can I ask why you hate this shirt? It's okay. You saw it on my closet you two years ago get... and you hated it. <laughs> People are gonna ask you where you got that. How's I think CB? it's a cool shirt. Can I give you a compliment? I don't. There. You. I you, can't. You, 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 I want just tell Angela she looks like ass. And she <laughs> and and just tell her that she, because anything you say to her, she thinks the opposite. No, that's so not you true. Are, it just with you in certain things because I know, like I know you don't like the shirt. I walked in. You do this thing where you try to <laughs> light. I walked in. You go, whoa, sparkles. Like that was not. I think you look cool. Thank you. I think you look really beautiful. But. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. I'm Ari. And I'm Angela. And we are a faith-based... Faith-based. We are a <laughs> faith-based podcast. We talk everything spirituality, mental health. We welcome everyone and anyone. We want you to feel safe with us. That's right. What's up, Ari? What's up? Should we uh, hop right well, into it? Recently, Ari and I have... We're always grateful in general. We're always grateful for Girls Gone Bible. But I really think it's amped up a little bit as of recent um, because you and I are just having so many moments of just being like, us? Yeah. We get to do this? Like, this is – and I just want to let you guys know that if you think that we're doing something good for you, you don't understand what you're doing for us. Ari and I are so happy – every day of our lives because of Girls Gone Bible. We get to study the Bible and get close to Jesus and then tell people about Jesus on a platform. Like, this is my favorite thing that I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I am I so grateful that you guys watch. I am so grateful that you guys have taken this podcast where it is because it's not us. It's you guys. It's you guys that love Jesus. It's you guys that are hungry for Jesus and you want to know more. And that's why you come back every week. And just thank you guys for letting us do this. We are so happy. If nothing else, I want you guys to know if you love us, just know that you've you've done so much for us by letting us come on here and do this. It's so true. I mean, people will come up to Angela and I and they'll they'll be like, You you healed me. Like you helped me so much. And all I can think is like, you are healing Truly. me. You are helping me. Like you are helping us. Like yeah. you have no idea how much you're changing our lives. Yeah. It's incredible. And we're just we're so thankful for you guys. And just I also, I, I had a moment where when you and I were talking and we don't really get, we get such beautiful, encouraging messages. Like I'm able to come on here and be so vulnerable because you guys make me feel so safe. You yeah. guys give us that safe place. All of your messages and words do not go unseen. Mm. I We see them all and we are just... I, there are no words. There truly are no words just to how grateful we are to have you guys as our family. And we just love you guys so much. So Yeah, and that is honestly like we don't, we might not respond to everything, but we really do see everything. <clears throat> and like you have no idea what the kind messages do. And also it's just like we don't even receive any negative. Like sure, sometimes on Instagram, but like on the YouTube and the Spotify, like we don't get any negative we don't have any negativity at yeah. all. It's just such a beautiful thing that God is doing and he's allowing us to like experience this in just such a pure, uplifting way. Yeah. And like we just, we get, we have the bet. You don't understand. Like we spend all week thinking about you guys and yeah. thinking about Jesus and praying for you guys and being like, Jesus, please, what do our people need to hear? What does our family, because that's what you are to us. We're like, what do they need to hear? And then it's so cool to then see all I mean I feel like the number one comment that we get is people saying how do you guys know every single week yeah. what I need to hear and it just like 
it brings me back to Jesus. And I'm like, please, my guy, like, how do you do it? How do you do it? Thank you. Just keep doing what you're doing. He's so good. I know. Girl, people are like, you guys just spoke to me. I just asked the Holy Spirit and then I watched you guys and it's exactly what I needed. He, It's just, that's how, that's how he works. That's why we always need to trust him because it's, that's just how he works. It's the coolest thing in the world. We're yeah. so grateful. Um, so today, by the way, okay, so today is basically our Valentine's Day episode. It's coming out after Valentine's Day, but like whatever. Um... We're just going to have some fun We're today. just going to have some fun. We're going to read a great chat. story. Um, do you want to tell the demon transferring story? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know you guys like a little laugh on your Friday <laughs> drive home to work. Go ahead. I, I mentioned the demon. And you know what I love about you guys is like I can mention something so briefly in an instant. And like people will hear. They hear everything. And they don't forget it. Please don't clip it up, okay? Yeah. yeah. yeah this one of stays, those goofy things that happen to us. <laughs> this stays in the episode okay so <clears throat> it basically all starts it all starts <laughs> please Angela. when we are going to this worship night so one of our friends had this like little worship night thing right we get there it's not okay okay so what happens because we're on the way Ari's having a rough day I had a rough day okay <laughs> I thought I don't know I just had a really rough day <laughs> and, and, and I just <laughs> okay, I'm going to be, okay, I'm going to start off with saying that okay. I need you guys to understand, Ari and I, we are your spiritual leaders, and you can trust us. <laughs> you can, this was a bad day and night for both Everybody of us. Everybody has them. Yeah, and this could be classified as almost religious delusion, because like there Please. were things happening that, in our heads that weren't actually happening in real life. So... So we're on our way to this worship night, and I see that Ari's not really feeling good. And she's like, she's just like a little anxious, and she's, how are you feeling? You tell him. I just wasn't feeling good. She wasn't feeling good. I wasn't feeling good. And then we get to the worship night, and we go into the bathroom, and I looked in the mirror, and I was like, who is that? Like, I just didn't feel like myself. And yeah. I'm, I'm pretty good most of the time, but today was just, I don't know what happened. Can I tell him about what you said about the depression? <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's all about me bleeding out my life every week. Why not? She goes, shut up, Angela. It's not a, she, shut up. She was so, it was really sad in the moment, but she, she, we're in the car and she's like not talking to me. And I'm like, hey, can I pray for you? Can we pray? And she's like, no, I don't want to pray. So I'm like, yeah, this girl has demons. Okay, and, and then she goes, it's funny now thinking back that just our mental state was so like not there. So we get to this worship night, right? We are grown women with a podcast. Grown women. Grown women with a podcast where we are supposed to be spiritual <laughs> leaders. We are in a auditorium of children. High schoolers. High schoolers, college kids, but like very, like the kids are like, these are 17 year old, 18 year olds. And like <laughs> me and Ari are in the audience during this message. We're feeling it. We're going through so much. And then they do an altar call. call. These poor kids. <clears throat> We were the first ones up at the altar call. <laughs> we were the first ones up. And, like, these kids are just trying to get to the front to oh, accept Jesus for the first time. All. We're like, get out of the way, you guys. <laughs> we need to go. And so we're literally at the front of this altar call, face down. We're face planted. We're bawling our eyes out. I mean, we are... We're holding each other, <laughs> laughing, crying. So then... My body, I don't think I'm going to sound like a kooky. Okay. We already disclaimed that it's, it was a bad time. It's just so funny and so dramatic. And the truth is about me and Ari, like, if the spirit is moving, we are going to catch it. You don't care. We don't know how to not be dramatic in our relationship with Jesus. We will be bawling our eyes out in the middle of, like, and it's just, like, such an inappropriate time. Anyways, so tell them about when the demons left. So Please. Ari, Ari, Ari had a lot of demons in her body. No, I didn't have a a lot of demons in okay, my body. Okay. I, I had a moment during worship where my body started like I don't know convulsing a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I've never I don't know I've never experienced it but my, my, my I started twitching and something something went out of me. I don't know. I, no it's actually not funny. This is real. It's That's not, beautiful. It's not and I, I after that happened I was like I need to tell my GGB family because this is incredible but then I was like I don't want them to think I'm nuts but I felt something come off of me. I can't explain it 
And we're in the car, and I, I looked at her, I go, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, she's, and then she's telling me all about her encounter, about how the demons left and, the, and whatever left. And then she calls my mom. It's 3 o'clock in the morning in Florida. She calls my mom. My mom's sitting there like, okay, great. And then as Ari's talking, I go, okay, now this is where my delusion comes in. She starts having a panic no, attack. No, no. Okay, so Ari goes... Ari goes, um, you know, and, and, and when I was convulsing and they were leaving my body, I went to go grab Angela and whatever. And then in my and head... And I saw something switch in her head in, in the car. In my head, I remember the one time where someone told me <laughs> that demons transfer through putting hands on each other. So I start going, and I start going, she transferred her demons into me. So and then I start having a panic attack. So I'm like... Oh, I'm not feeling good. See, what she had came to me. She but she's keeping it all in, by the way. Yeah, I'm not saying anything, but I'm not feeling right. Okay, and then what happened? So then we get to my house, and you guys know I'm new to this whole demon thing, you know? <laughs> so she's just like, she's sitting on her knees on my floor, and she's just like, she won't even look at me. And I go, I sit down with her, and I go, hey, you okay? She goes, I'm sorry, I just, I need a minute. <laughs> And she goes, I go, what's, what's wrong? Are you okay? She goes, no, I'm just, I'm not feeling good. And I just think you might have transferred the demons onto me. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm sitting there. I feel, not only do I feel awful, but I feel completely hopeless. I feel weird. I'm, I'm sitting there. I start looking at my fingertips thinking that the demons might have came out of the, my fingertips and went on to her. And so I'm so delusional. I'm so messed up in the head. I'm going like this. Am I a no good demon transfer? <laughs> just stay away from me. So no, I didn't say stay away from me so like I that. Just, so she goes, I just need a minute. So she starts praying out loud. She goes... <laughs> this is this is so weird. This is truly the weirdest night of my life. <laughs> you go. <laughs> she starts screaming. I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, body, and spirit. Demons, get out of here and go back to hell to the fiery furnace where you belong. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like this. She's looking at her like. I just keep looking at my fingertips. I thought, like, you know how Spider-Man, that's what I thought I did. Please, please, I can't. Please. Oh, my God. And then after we didn't even talk, we just, like, went to bed and didn't talk, and I felt so weird. I'm I was, so sorry. I'm a no good demon transfer. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, First of all, me, sc me screaming, what would your neighbors think if they just heard go back she to the scream Go back to the fiery <laughs> furnace. I don't know why. I'm like so new to all this. I don't know what was no, going on. I don't know what that means either. I don't know. Did you hear that? I don't know. I don't go know. Go back to hell. <laughs> Desperate to get the demons. <laughs> it's not okay. Oh. It's not okay. And none of this is an exaggeration. And I I think about your face all the time and I feel so bad <laughs> what I did to you. <laughs> You're sitting there, it's so sad. <laughs> Spidey the demon transfer. <laughs> <laughs> oh good I and then I woke up and I realized how delusional we are. I literally, we I woke up the next day and I go, that is the weirdest night of my life. So we were I laughing so hard. And truthfully, the reason all of this was so bad was because any after midnight, me and Ari get so weird. We get after so 8 p.m., she makes necklaces out of gum. She's just like, we are like done. Don't try to talk to us. Don't try to work. Yeah. No, the funniest is when I call my girlfriend the next morning, you know, and I, and I, I start telling her this story. I go, yeah, I think I had a couple of uh, demons in me. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, okay. She goes, uh, okay. She goes, you think maybe you just uh, 
had a had a hard night. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're just like BMSing or something. Oh man! Oh my gosh, it was so. I mean, we laugh about it all the time. Yes. I'm a no good demon <laughs> transfer. I'm a no good demon transfer. <laughs> How could I do that to you? I go. I'm sorry. Please don't touch me. <laughs> oh, wait. I was like. I did not yell like that. You were Don't panicking even... in the car. I was... You almost took your clothes off in the car. <laughs> That's what I do. She rips I... her clothes when off I have when a she has panic, panic attack. attack. I take my clothes off. I'm like, Angela. <laughs> I'm like, Angela, we're in. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Please don't, please don't clip this up and please, post it on TikTok. Please, please, I, I go through it. enough with you guys clipping out when I said I lived off chocolate milk because I was so depressed. I know. Please, guys, don't clip this. Um, and I just want you to know you can still trust us. It was just a bad night. You can, please, you can lean on us. We're swear, good. We just had a bad night. And if you see us crying at the altar call, we're okay. We yeah, just love Jesus. Just, we just, everything's okay. We just, you know... <laughs> oh God! Nothing's funnier than when I see you laughing but crying. Ah! I'm like when the Holy Spirit hits and I start doing my giggle laugh. Uh. I am so grateful for Dinnerly. You guys have no idea. Dinnerly makes my life so much easier. I am so grateful for all the nights that I worked all day and I am just so tired by literally 6 p.m. that I can't bring myself to have to really cook anything. So having Dinnerly meal kits truly changed my life. So my New Year's resolution is to start eating healthy, but my problem is that I don't know where to start when shopping for groceries. I want to find meals that are good for you, taste great, and are not insanely expensive. Truly, my life has been so busy lately that when I get home from work, all I want to do is eat and go to bed. Like, who has the time to whip up a complicated dinner in the kitchen? It's also so expensive and unhealthy to order or take out all the time. I need something quick, I need something easy, and I need something nutritious. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the price for everything is going up. I want affordable meals that I can make quickly after a long day. This podcast is sponsored by Dinnerly. Dinnerly is the most affordable meal kit I've ever come across. With my code GGB, you can get up to 25 free meals. With Dinnerly, you can choose from over 100 delicious dishes every week, including a wide selection of cuisines and flavors, from steak dinners to oven-roasted salmon or even your favorite takeout do. My favorite recent meal from Dinnerly was their salmon. I love salmon, but I just can never make it right, so I'm so grateful that I came across theirs. And the recipes are completely customizable. You can choose your own protein, swap in a low-carb side, or make a dish vegetarian. They are also the only meal kit with gluten-free friendly customizations. All right, I know I'm probably so annoying with how much I talk about Dinnerly, but honestly, the reason I love it so much is because it is so customizable for everybody. And it's like inclusive, like everybody can find something that they love and that they want and that's good for them and for their body and all of our bodies are so different. It was time for me to learn how to cook better and Dinnerly has upped my cooking game. Make cooking exciting, affordable, and easy with Dinnerly. Head to dinnerly.com slash offer slash GGB and use code GGB for up to 25 free meals. Once again, that's dinnerly.com slash offer slash GGB for up to 25 free meals and make sure you use my promo code GGB so they know that I sent you. Thank you, Dinnerly. So today, because in light of Valentine's Day, this is gonna come out two days after Valentine's Day, but nonetheless, basically, Jacob is the, we know Abraham. You guys remember Abraham and Sarah. They had the son Isaac at their very late age. And then Jacob is Isaac's son. So basically <clears throat> Abraham is Jacob's grandfather. And you see in chapter 29 that Jacob comes to his grandfather's hometown to find a wife. And Jacob finds the woman he wants to marry at the well, which is really interesting because his dad, um, because his dad, Isaac, found his wife, Rebecca, also at the well. So basically, he arrives at the town and he goes to his uncle's house, Laban. After Jacob had stayed with Laban for a month, Laban said to him, You shouldn't work for me without pay just because we are relatives. Tell me how much your wages should be. Now Laban had two daughters. The older daughter was named Leah and the younger one was Rachel. There was no sparkle in Leah's eye, but Rachel had a beautiful figure and a lovely face. 
Since Jacob was in love with Rachel, he told her father, I'll work for you for seven years if you give me Rachel, your younger daughter, as my wife. Agreed, Laban replied. I'd rather give her to you than anyone else. Stay and work with me. So Jacob worked seven years to pay for Rachel, but his love for her was so strong that it seemed to him but a few days. Finally, the time came for him to marry her. I have fulfilled my agreement, Jacob said to Laban. Now give me my wife so I can sleep with her. So Laban invited everyone in the neighborhood to prepare a wedding feast. But that night, when it was dark, Laban took Leah to Jacob and he slept with her. Laban had given Leah a servant, Zilpah, to be her maid. But when Jacob woke up in the morning, it was Leah. What have you done to me, Jacob raged at Laban. I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? It's not our custom here to marry off a younger daughter ahead of the firstborn, Laban replied. But wait until the bridal week is over. Then we'll give you Rachel too, provided you promise to work another seven years for me. So Jacob agreed to work seven more years. A week after Jacob had married Leah, Laban gave him Rachel too. Laban gave Rachel a servant, Bilhah, to her maid. So Jacob slept with Rachel too, and he loved her much more than Leah. He then stayed and worked for Laban the additional seven years. And, yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to ask you what you thought about something. What? There was no sparkle in Leah's eye. Yeah, so I did a little studying. When I first read that, I when I first read that, you know what I thought? <clears throat> I was thinking, like, because my first initial thought was that, like, Jacob was so in love with Rachel that he couldn't even see any beauty in Leah. And, like, in his mind, Leah, like, was because he's so enamored by Rachel, he didn't even see a sparkle in Leah's eye. Yeah. What did you think? I don't know. I just was, like, sometimes you just you have that connection yeah and so he she he didn't see that in her but he did in Rachel that's what I got from exactly it. that's what I thought too I did a little research and basically in in different um translations some say that uh Rachel uh, or that Leah had big eyes or she had doe eyes mm. or she had um eyes that were just dull so different translations say different things and then I listened to some guys some theologians talking about it and they were basically saying that no one actually really knows what that means there are even some um theologians that think that leah had something wrong with her yeah. eyes so we actually don't know maybe but it she is had sad. demons in her eyes maybe she had de maybe she needs deliverance um let's just read this little part right here jacob's because i feel like it it really goes along with what we want to talk about today jacob's many children when the lord saw that leah was unloved he enabled her to have children but Rachel could not conceive. So Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, The Lord has noticed my misery, and now my husband will love me. She soon became pregnant again and gave birth to another son. She named him Simeon, for she said, The Lord heard that I was unloved and gave me another son. Then she became pregnant a third time and gave birth to another son. He was named Levi. For she said, surely this time my husband will feel affection for me since I have given him three sons. Let's talk about a couple of things <clears throat> in this situation. So basically a summary of that is that Jacob went to Laban, said, I love your daughter, Rachel. Let me have her as my wife. Laban said, yeah, of course, just work seven years. Jacob loves her so much that the seven years just felt like a couple of days because he loved her that much. Um, and then Laban deceived Jacob. And said that I like I'm not going to give you my second born daughter. I'm going to give you my first. And then Jacob is like, but that wasn't the deal. And I want Rachel. And so Laban says, OK, just work another seven years and you can have them both, which, mm -hmm. you know, we are not about polygamy. Jesus does not like polygamy. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, things like that in in the Old Testament and before, you know, things were just different back then. So this was permitted. This was normal. Um and then I, I look at this situation where this whole situation created such a massive rivalry between Rachel and Leah. And it's just so sad to see women going against each other over a man. And these two are sisters. Not that it's necessarily their fault. They were just put in this situation. Yeah. Um, but I think about I just think that this is so interesting because 
So basically, this rivalry between Leah and Rachel, both trying to gain the affection of their husband, ended up, ha- they had 12 sons all together. Yeah. Right? So Leah had four children. And then Rachel, and this just shows how, like, love, too, because we're talking all about love today. Love can make you so crazy and so insane. It says that Leah had four children with Jacob. And then Rachel gave her maid to Jacob to have children, just like Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham. And and this isn't, like, something that they even wanted to do, but just out of, like, the competition. And then Leah also gave her maid to Jacob and, ha- and started having kids that way. So both of them are having kids with their husband through their maidservant, all as a competition with each other, and they end up having 12 kids. Jacob had that. He had it. He had it. He had it. He was <laughs> living the life, my guy. I want to meet Jacob. <laughs> I know. Anyways, um, so so this ends up being so his twelve sons. This this is actually so cool. I love this. The twelve sons end up being the twelve tribes of Israel, mm-hmm. and I just love. I love this part of the story because it just shows that God truly always does keep His promises. He took this situation of so much deceit, Mm -hmm. so much chaos, so much wrong and evil. And like first Laban deceives Jacob and like all of this is birthed out of that. And then the girls are in rivalry with each other and nobody's intentions are good, but God still uses it for good because he made a promise that there will be the 12 tribes of Israel. And he used even out of all of this mess, he used it to bring his promise to pass. So good. And it just proves Genesis 50, 20 to be true, that you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Yeah, yes. The whole promise is that Abraham's family, that Abraham would become the father of a great nation. Mm-hmm. And I love that because, you know, people always ask the question, like, why does God let bad things happen? And everyone should really be asking, why is God so cool that through all the bad things that happen, he makes good from it all? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not his fault that bad things happen. It's actually our fault. Yeah. And the only part that he plays in it is using it for good. And yeah, and a lot of times we think it's bad, but it's actually not bad. I actually feel bad for people that don't go through things. Right. That's a scary thing when you haven't been through anything. A hundred percent. I mean, you can't even see God's miracles at work just love him he can work through anything and everything to accomplish his plan yeah and i love him for it no it's a beautiful story it it just it and it really shows love (laughs) jacob worked seven years to pay for rachel and then another seven years Mm -hmm. so he served 14 years when i read that i just take away how 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 he put the work in Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you know a lot of people don't do that nowadays they just give up and you're with somebody for you, you reach a, a threshold in your relationship where obviously things aren't become not as passionate mm. and they die down and you and you you face trials and hardships and then people just give up. Mm. And that's my biggest thing in relationships. And it's just like, no, it's not that you fell out of love. It's just that you gave up. You stopped trying. And this is like a perfect example. He just, he, he, okay, you want me to work another seven years? Okay, I'll do it. Mm. I'll do that for her. And then I love when he said he loved her so much that the seven years just felt like a few days. And that just goes to show you that God will restore the years that went missing. Okay. (laughs) It's true because a lot of us, you know, we're going through heartbreaks. We wasted many years with people that just ended up leaving or it just didn't work out. And then you're like, well, now look at, I I just wasted all these years. Now what? He just took all those years from me. No, God is a redeemer and Mm. he will restore everything that was taken from you. Mm. That I can promise you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You are so right about that. Please, I think that's something that people go through so much, especially when it comes to relationships, is like I gave all these years away. I lost all these years. Nothing is lost with God. Nothing. Like, I don't care if you are in jail for 30 years. Like, with Jesus, that time is not lost. He will redeem every single, he will give back everything that was taken from you. Yeah, and people are stuck in their bondage because of that, and I just really hope, you guys can really just be free from that. Yeah. 
really, because we go through a lot and, you know, there's a lot of things we regret and a lot of things that we wish we could have done different and we wish we would have left earlier, but he, we learn in that process mm. and he restores it all. Yeah. He restored every single day for me that was taken from me. That's right. That's absolutely right. Hey, we should come up with a handshake. I know. We'll I, I can't believe we haven't. I, I really like that you said that about the working for so long. And, and I mean, there's so many parts of love in this story, but something that I... Okay, we'll talk about... Because my guy pursued her so hard, and we live in a world where I feel like women accept being in a relationship with someone or accept settling for someone who's not actively and fiercely pursuing them, and it's not okay. Okay, guys, this episode is sponsored by, you all know, my favorite, BetterHelp. Okay, you guys all know that I'm single, but my best relationship is with my sister, Angela. A common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy to be right. But sometimes the best ones are when both people put in the work to make them work. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you can face in all your relationships with friends, work, your significant other, or just anyone. I've shared this many times that I'm just such a huge advocate for better help. It helped me so much through my healing journey. It was convenient for me. I went right online. I told them exactly how I was feeling. They set me up with someone that was suited for me, a Christian therapist who understood who I could just pour out to, and they listened without judgment. And if I could encourage anyone to do anything. Even if you're not going through a tough time, it's just a great way to dig deep and to talk about your feelings. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. I promise you won't regret it. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. And become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash girlsgonebible today to get 10% off your first month. Betterhelp.com slash girlsgonebible. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. Tell me how you feel about this. I took two really big things out of this story. Yeah. The first one is that the beautiful love that Jacob has for Rachel and the multiple things that we hear in the scriptures. He says, I took them all out. It says, Jacob was in love with Rachel. It says verbatim, he was in love with Rachel. He was willing to work seven years in exchange for her hand in marriage. His love for her was so strong that it seemed to him but a few days. I mean, that's beautiful. He worked another seven years to finally marry her. He loved her much more than Leah. So when you truly love someone, I don't think that you can love anybody else. Yeah. And the second part of this story is no matter what Leah did, she would not earn Jacob's love. Mm -hmm. It says in the scripture first that he loved Rachel much more than Leah. Leah was unloved. This is so sad. I feel so bad for her. It says that after she got pregnant, she said, the Lord has noticed my misery and now my husband will love me. She thought by getting pregnant, her husband would love her. Yeah. After her third son, Leah said, surely this time my husband will feel affection for me since I have given him three sons. And then the last time after her sixth son, she said, now my husband will treat me with respect for I have given him six sons. So she looked for love. She looked for affection and she looked for respect through works, mm -hmm. through trying to earn that from Jacob yeah. and no matter what she did, she could not get that from him because he wasn't for her. He wasn't meant for her. And I sit here and I think about all the women who, I mean, people, women, even in this specific instance where they will literally get pregnant to try. I mean, it's a story you hear all the time where like the love has died down. My husband is different from me. So I'll just get pregnant in hopes that that will bring him closer to me or that I'll win him over that way. And I just think about like all the women who feel like they have to earn a man's love by doing all this for him him by being at his beck and call by like fulfilling all of his needs and desires and I sit here and I think like 
Jesus is so clear. God is so clear in the Bible that we are not saved through works, but by faith. So if we don't have to work to earn salvation, if we don't have to work to earn God's love, but we have to work to earn a man's love, that is insane. No, yeah. it's it, But that all goes back to your self-worth. Yeah. And that's why we don't get into relationships until we're whole. Yeah. You go in there broken, you're going to be trying to win his love. You're going to be doing what you can to, to, you know, have them just respect you. And that is just a clear indication that you do not respect yourself. Mm. You cannot go into a relationship broken. Mm. That's why it is so important to fall in love with Jesus before you love someone else. The greatest gift, and I say it all the time, the greatest gift of my life was falling in love with Jesus, building an intimate relationship with him, yeah. being alone. Sometimes isolation is never good, but sometimes you got to be alone to really get to know Jesus. And he will show you. I was never loved correctly. Mm. And he showed me unconditional love. And so now... I know what that feels like. I know what real love feels like. So I, I, when somebody comes in, I'm going to know right away. I didn't before. Mm. So I just kept letting things slide. I just kept let, I just kept, oh, okay, he, he, maybe he'll change. And just kept accepting yeah. the bare minimum, not being with a true man of God. Now, because of everything I went through and because I saw God's unwavering love, I will never waste my time. I will know so quickly. Mm. And that's what happens when you build a relationship with Jesus, when you really get to know yourself. I look in the mirror, you guys. A year ago, I had no idea who I was. I I looked in the mirror. I was like, who is that? Mm. I am so proud of the woman I am. I love myself. I am proud of myself. I, if, if, yeah. I'm just, and, and when you get to that point where you love yourself, you don't accept bare minimum. No. You are only going to do, you're only going to, to let what's best in for you. Yeah. You know? It's all down to self-worth. It's mm. all down. Like, I feel like something you hear a lot is like, oh, I attracted this person. I attracted this person. I actually think it's not that you had even attracted them. I just accepted them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, you just accepted them. I, I don't th like sh you can attract all sorts of different people, but it doesn't matter. It, all that matters is who you accept into your life. And we it, it's like the most famous saying that you accept the love that you think you deserve. Yeah. If you think you if you feel so down about yourself that you feel like you deserve to be with somebody who doesn't actually like treat you well or pursue you correctly you will accept somebody doing the bare minimum yeah. for you you know what I mean yeah. actually I love that you say that and I think it's a great point for everyone to know because there are, you can be at your best and you're going to get some uh you know weird types of men or women coming into your life but you have to, it's, it's, they're always going to come, but you have to know not to accept it. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. And, and when you are really surrendered and you are walking in the will of God, you are going to have the Holy Spirit in you in a completely different way. And it will tell you, your body will tell you exactly if they're not right for you, mm. if they're not, if they're not good. Like that's, that's, that's why it's so important to be walking in the will of God and being obedient because you're going to know right away, which before when I wasn't walking in the will of God and I was, I was, I would say separated from him because I was obviously still in a place of, you know, not being obedient. I couldn't see straight still. I couldn't decipher it. I think unrequited love is really, it's heartbreaking and it's so sad. And that's what we see with Leah and Jacob. Um, and and then we see literally the opposite with him and Rachel. And it's like, what do you think about the th the the theory that if a man if he wanted to he would? I think that it's completely that's that's one of the truest statements ever. I if know. he wanted to, he would. Men are hunters. Yeah. When they want something, they're not going to stop. They are going to pursue you. And and the thing is, is like I hear a lot of women being like, well, he just he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Oh, God, please. He, he doesn't know. Of course he knows. He no. just knows that you will accept the bare minimum. That's why we have to 
Know who you are. Know your worth. Yeah. Stand firm in it. Do, if somebody isn't meeting you where you want, if somebody isn't meeting you in the middle and you're just taking bare minimum, they're going to give you less than bare minimum. Yeah. You have to know your worth and you have to walk away when somebody is not meeting your needs because I'm telling you guys right now, they're going to waste your time. Yeah. I mean, please, if we can leave GGB gang with anything, it's just the mentality that like for men and for women, women, it's like you need to be pursued so fiercely and so intentionally and so you know and I've said it before like it needs to be very obvious how this person feels about you and men you need to be pursuing a girl who is all the who's a woman of God who has all the traits that you want in a woman in a wife and in the mother of your kids and like don't settle for anything less than that and don't settle for a girl who's like stringing you along and and like you know messing you around and not being honest with you games are not okay we're not playing games anymore me and Ari are so serious about like we don't play games we are so upfront and honest with guys and like people guys that we're talking to and in dating like I don't play any sort of games <clears throat> at all either I like you or I don't you're gonna know either way and let know? me tell you I'm, and I don't want to come off as I always want to come from a place of love but I'm also gonna be honest and if it sounds harsh then so be it <clears throat> those are God's daughters and God's sons and if you're going to be playing with people and breaking people's hearts and cheating and not being honest and ghosting what goes around comes around and you will not get away with that and i yeah. i am a firm believer in that so you 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 just you uh, again when you don't know the word of god it's really hard for you to live right and to be in a to be good in a relationship when you're really walking in obedience and you know how jesus was and you know what the word says you're going to have integrity you're going to have respect you're not going to just you know you know flee someone off and not talk to them and be ignorant and and just move on and you're going to you're going to have compassion you're going to no, you don't. You're not gonna want to hurt someone. Thank you. Even Actually, if you're not ugh. gonna be with them, you're going to put your pride aside and your ego. You're going to talk with them and you're going to 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 say sorry. And that's how we all should be. Thank you so much for saying that about breaking people's hearts. Let's be so seriously for real right now that like just like Ari said, every single soul on the planet matters to God. And like, th we are his sons and daughters. And if you mess with his sons and daughters, like you will get what's coming to you. It's not okay. You are, we must treat everybody's heart with as if it's fragile because they are and like you treat other people's hearts with care whether you want to be with them or not whether you barely know them or not if you're a man you have even more responsibility to be <clears throat> gentle with a woman's heart to take care of her heart I don't care if you don't even know her I don't care if you don't care about her it's it's your responsibility to take care of a woman's heart and it goes back to what I always say I think that's why it's so I just when when you go through really hard things in life, I just take it as a blessing because I I just find that people that have gone through things in their life, they have a deeper love and they have a, de a deeper sense of people's feelings and they value people more. They don't look at people as disposable to where someone who hasn't been through a lot and just kind of coasting and through life and, and doesn't have a lot of life experience. I've noticed that they look at people more disposable mm, yeah. where you know and 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 so I just think I'm just so happy that I've experienced such deep heartbreak and I've experienced so much in life because I truly I look at people and I just I value them I I, I would never just throw someone away I, I I would do anything for someone and I and I know what heartbreak feels like and yeah. even if I don't want to be with someone you have to take care of people yeah. these are human beings these are people that loved you 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 don't you don't just throw someone away like they're a piece of trash no I hate the mentality especially in like our culture right now where it's like it's almost cool to like be a player as a girl or a guy and it's almost cool to like be like uh -huh, yeah I've f this guy over I I screwed this girl yeah. over or whatever and it's just like 
when did that become cool? Like that's honestly so lame to me. I, I, I laugh at people like that because I look at them and I think it's cool, isn't it? Well, it's not gonna be cool when, when you I, get it slapped back in the mm. face at you because that's, I know that is exactly how life works. That is exactly how God works. And that, and he, he, that's what he does. Mm -hmm. And he, you, you will not get away with it. That's just the truth. Yeah. Whether it's a year, two years or six years, you're going to get it slapped right back in your face it's and so it's going to be 10 times more painful for you. No, you can't, you, you, you truly reap what you sow. Hi guys, this episode of Girls Gone Bible is brought to you by Menacora Honey. It's getting colder. It's time to think about presents for the people you love. And this miracle of nature just fell in my lap at the perfect time. It's a rare super honey that is 100% natural and has some unique properties. Menacora makes Manuka honey, a single origin honey that comes from New Zealand, where the bees only feed on the nectar of the Manuka tea tree, making honey that is pure, rich, and complex with a creamier texture that is completely on a different level from the normal honey you can find at the supermarket. You can use it as you would any other honey, but that's what puts the super in Manuka honey is that it's super rich in antioxidants and prebiotics, a hundred times more compared to regular honey. On top of that, it contains an antibacterial compound called MGO that can be found exclusively in Manuka honey. The bottom line is that these nutrients really support your optimal immune and digestive health, and it's delicious. This is just the perfect way to treat myself with something that is going to keep me strong through the colder months and the perfect gift for the people I love to keep them sweet and healthy too. Menacora sent me a jar and squeeze bottle of their MGO 850 Plus Manuka Honey, their best-selling honey. This 850 Plus Honey has this creamy caramel texture that melts in your mouth and is unlike anything I've ever tried. I can grab a spoonful out of a jar to put in my favorite beverage or squeeze some honey out on some toast or oatmeal. It's so delicious. And I personally, you guys know that I'm about my oatmeal and I'm actually not even kidding. Manu Manacora honey is my favorite honey that I've ever had and I put it in my oatmeal every single morning with my banana and my berries. If you head to menacora.com slash ggb you can get $25 off their starter kit which comes with the MGO 850 plus Manuka honey, a free travel pack honey sticks, a free wooden spoon and also a free guidebook. It's the perfect gift for a loved one this holiday season. Now I love the jar and squeeze bottle but the extra pack of compostable honey sticks is perfect for whenever you're on the go. You can bring them with you when you're traveling or need a quick snack running errands and they're a perfect energy boost if you're out for a run or at the gym especially in this time of year that's m-a-n-u-k-o-r-a dot com slash ggb to get 25 dollars off your starter kit this is just the ultimate honey indulge and try some honey with superpowers from menukora we are like very intentional in the way that we accept like I for example for me personally I, I guess like the one of the biggest things that I want you guys to walk away with with this is that it's better to be single than with someone who doesn't treat you well I will literally not even consider considering a guy unless he's already actively pursuing me like there's just no way yeah like we deserve to be treated very well and I want your standards to be high and like you you, if you're in a situation right now where you're with somebody who isn't treating you right, who isn't, who just isn't putting in the effort, like waiting 14 years for you, like I know that's crazy, but that's the standard we should be living by. And I encourage you to today, unless you're married, that's a completely different story. But if you're just dating someone and they're still like not being about you in the way that you deserve, walk away. Love yourself enough, respect yourself enough. I know it's hard, but I know that you can do it. Only accept love that is the way that God loves us, truly. Uh, yeah, thank you for saying that. I remember I had a moment where I was just feeling so sad. And I remember I have this lovely mentor. She's an older woman. She's been married for, for many years. And she said to me, um, you, you, you're, you're in pain now. Can you imagine if you were to marry that person mm. and you would have had kids with the person, a, a, someone who can just um, not protect your heart? Imagine you had kids with that person. Now that's a place where you should be scared. Yeah. And it's so true. It's like we are going, we are going to go through so much in this life, yeah. especially when we have children. I think I said it in one of the episodes before, but. We are just, we, there are, 
we are going to go through so many trials and storms and with children, and we need someone who is going to stand firm with us, who we're not going to have to worry about them not caring and being so selfish and just abandoning in us. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we... We just, yeah, you you need someone who will not leave your side when the going gets tough. Yes. And we get a lot of questions of like, what what do you think, what what is love? And to me, that's what love is. Yes, it's it's great. It's it's great when it's passionate and it's new and and it's fun. But then what happens when the going gets tough? Who's gonna be there and stick by you through all that? And I and I I, I truly think that is what love is. And. <clears throat> I think love is an emotion, but it says many times in the Bible that it's not just an emotion. It really, I mean, it's not just an emotion. It is truly a choice. It's, it's a, a verb. Con- it's, it's a choice. It's a choice. You have to stick by your person and you fight through it. Mm. And you just, you make that decision every day Yeah. to stick by them and not leave them and I think about you. I think about my family. I think about... No, because I I, I truly believe that God has us in this position together to, to like, grow together because we do business together. We're always together. We're we're each other's, like, rocks right now. And I... Right now? Is that subject to change? No, but I mean, we're both... (laughs) No. (laughs) But we're both not married, and we do go through a lot together. Yeah. And... I, and I, I said this to you before, like, th- what I love about our friendship is I feel so safe with you. I just know that we're, we're not going to just, like, bounce when oh the going God. gets tough. We're going to fight through it. We're going to talk through it because yeah. we love each other. That's what you do. It's it's a con- it's a conscious effort every single day exactly. that we make to each other. I'm happy that you say that because it's like – being married is completely different than just being in a relationship like we say definitely you should leave if someone's not treating you right you should leave but like marriage is completely different I mean like you entered into covenant under God like you you God you God is honoring that marriage Mm -hmm. and you should honor it too to try and fight through it and I always think this you should be picky in dating and then gracious in marriage Mm -hmm picky in dating because you you still have the ability to choose you're making that choice and you should be looking at everything and you should be evaluating everything but then when you're in marriage you you got to start being gracious cuz there are going to be things that you don't like about that person there are going to be things that are annoying and that um, they aren't meeting your needs in a certain way and that you need to have grace in those times and acceptance in a way to be like, you know what, this isn't exactly how I want it to be, but I'm in this thing, so I'm going to accept what I can't change and then pray for what I hopefully can be changed yeah stop giving these people the benefits before marriage and I don't even want to get into right now yeah, about yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. but you know you're, you're you're just oh not even just that okay I have had in the past a habit of being a wife to every boyfriend that I've had that's what I'm saying yeah like I will literally c- clean cook do your laundry for what? For what? I don't even know you like that. It's like, no. I know. I, I'm, I, it's really, it's been my biggest struggle in life is that I will immediately just like be everything for someone in that way. Literally be a wife to someone who like, it's just so crazy. Please, like you, there's a, honestly, the one thing that I do love about Christianity and, and people can like talk smack about Christianity as much as they want be like, God, there's so, there's so many rules, whatever. They're right about everything. Everything. Dude, I'm sitting here being like, yeah, no, you shouldn't live with someone before getting married. You shouldn't act like husband and wife before you are, because then why would you ever get married? Yeah. What's the point? Then you you get lazy. Exactly. And and I used to look down upon that stuff. Oh, you should live. Why wouldn't we live together? It's crazy. You date, you get to know each other on an emotional, spiritual level, and then and then that's it. And then you'll know really quick. You don't need to waste years. You don't need to sit there playing house. Yes, yes. You know, I've been thinking about this a lot recently, actually, because I've been thinking about how, like, I had spent, honestly, I've spent the past 10 years of my life in long-term relationships. Me too. I have always, you, Ari and I had the same story where we have spent since I was 18 years old, 
No, since I was 16 years old, the past 10 years, I have spent every single year in like a long-term relationship. I'm like four years, three years, two years. I mean, it's just like always in a long-term relationship with people that ended up not being my husband. Mm -hmm. And now on one side, I'm happy I have the experience. I know that I'm going to be such a better wife from all that I've learned. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But also... I've realized recently that like as I've gotten closer to Jesus, honestly, when I started reading the Bible and I truly got saved and I truly entered a relationship in with Jesus and, and I started to somewhat live my life according to the word of God, my relationships, I have not been in a long, long-term relationship like that. Seven months, whatever, eight months, but like but like a long-term, like years long relationship, yeah. I haven't since being with Jesus and I think it's because he doesn't want that for us. I don't know if we're supposed to spend so much time with somebody, years and years with somebody to go through. That's why breakups feel like that. That's why they feel like you're dying because you kind of are. Yeah. You give so much of yourself to somebody and then it's just you're separated. I I I don't know if that's supposed to happen. I'm really thinking re I'm because I'm thinking about when I have kids and I'm thinking about like my daughter dating someone for 4 years and then like it not being the person that she ends up with and then getting into another three year long relationship. And I don't think it's supposed to be like that. Yeah, I just think it's a, it's I don't think you need more than four years now. It goes four back, years. It goes back That's to a lot. It, it does. I, I think it does have to do a lot with the age. Now, say if you're like in high school or something and you're with a boyfriend, it's different. But as you get a little bit older, you don't. It's just insane. There's no reason to be together for three, four years without no. a ring on your finger. Honestly, absolutely not. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. There's just something about a long-term relationship that is starting to not make sense to me. Either you get married or you don't. Why are you together? I know. I, you know what I mean? I love flowers. I know she does love flowers. And honestly, if you, if, if, if I am with someone, I want them, I, I want them, I like, I want them to decorate the house. With what? With like roses and like I want it to be a thing. That's so cute. It's I've can I be honest? Yeah. I've always had that. Like I don't even remember a time if I was like dating someone. Like I've always had somebody do that for me. Really? Isn't it yeah. funny how we always like I've always had certain things from every guy as well. Yeah, I think it's a familiar spirit. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is another thing with this girl. This is what she does now. I have had. I where did you? Where? Who told you this? Because it's I, all you saying. I have. Oh, had it's a, a familiar spirit. On. I, I have had a familiar spirit following me in with men, and you guys know I would never talk bad about anyone. And I've truly, I love everybody. I love everybody from my past. Sure. Great guys. Gr Just great, kidding. great people. No, seriously, really wonderful people. I have had this is a freaking familiar spirit following me. Where dudes are just a little, like, you know, yeah. I have had the same thing. In, like, my past, I don't know how many relationships where it's just very, like, uh, and I'm like, uh, and, like, and I'm pretty sure that's why I'm so avoidant now because everything scares me. It's so funny because she says she's avoidant. She's actually the most... Emo you're, I think, honestly... Like I am the, not no, more no, emotional listen than to you. This. So this past couple of days, sometimes I think I'm realizing that I'm, like, the guy in the relation our relationship, right? So I just, like, I was just chilling the other day, you know? And so she she gets all riled up. You do it at the airport, too, if I'm not paying enough attention. <laughs> really? Hey, are you okay? What's up? Do, you don't... What? Okay. Yeah, I want you to talk to me. <laughs> And when what did I do? No, you were you so are rude not. On the phone, you are right. not avoidant. I am avoidant with guys. No, you're not. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I am. You're not. You are the biggest lover ever. No, I'm a lover, but I'm avoidant in the sense that, like, I will, like, I don't, like. Yeah, I'd be avoidant I'm... too if I was freaking. Never mind. Deal with what I <laughs> dealt with. I know. Please, I'd be like, get away. I know. These, you know. I know. You know what? I... I what? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You know what I? You know what I realize I need? Huh? I love men that are active. Yeah. Like I love guys that play sports because of it course. shows discipline. 
shows just discipline. love a guy that's active. Can we talk about a let's okay? Listen, let's talk about exactly what we want in a man. Let's 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 let's, let's paint a picture of our perfect ideal man. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I don't even know my what I want anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're like I'll take anything. I'll freaking man, I want. I want a man who is <laughs> brown hair, brown eyes. <laughs> Tick tack tall, couple tattoos. Six four. Six two is fine. Um I want a man, maybe an ex or like a retired NBA player. NBA player? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> They're so tall. Um no, but I really I want someone who like I want. I almost like. I am thinking so much recently about like a pastor or just someone. Like, I just want somebody who is able to work and works hard at whatever it is he does, but like really, truly lets the work. Like, I want his life to be the Bible. Like, I yeah. just want somebody who's so obsessed with the Bible and so obsessed with Jesus and who understands and, like we said, like who can teach us things. Yeah. And he needs what I realize is like, because it's not even, I realize that it's not even just about somebody who is a follower of Jesus. But I think that there also needs to be a compatibility in, like, the type of Christian that you are. Because there are different types. There's, you know, Christians who are not that spiritual, who are more, you know, a little bit legalistic, maybe, or maybe religious in a way. There are ones who are very spiritual, very charismatic. I mean, it even comes down to the fa- to the idea of, like, do you both speak in tongues? Like, how do you guys feel about tongues? How do you guys feel about fasting? How do you guys feel about, you know, there's so many different elements to it. And I just, I need someone who is, like, like, I want my dude to speak in tongues and have tattoos. You're going to have that. <laughs> I know. And make you laugh. And, yeah, that's my biggest thing. I've just got to be with someone who is as funny as you are. Okay. I, I was waiting for that. I'm not even kidding. I was waiting for that. <laughs> I need someone who's as funny as you. I need. I need you guys, a- she says I'm like Theo Vaughn. <laughs> That's a compliment. I love him. I love him so much. <laughs> no, you you are like Theo Vaughn. You, you do need someone who's funny like him. I need... He's awesome. No, I do. I need somebody who is like... I, I He has to be hilarious. What do you want? Oh, I just want a good man. I want... Oh, can I add one more thing? Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Thank you. You reminded me. I want a man... This is actually my number one requirement. Truly, my number one requirement now... I need somebody who is so secure. Oh, yes. And so trusting and so confident. I need somebody who's not worried about where I'm at, what I'm doing, who I'm talking to. Like, I can't handle it. I have really not had a situation in a long time where I felt like somebody was actually secure in themselves and it will ruin my life. Like, and it does. When I'm in a situation like that, it kills me. It makes, it puts a ceiling on me. It makes me such a small version of myself. I will shrink myself down to make the guy that I'm with comfortable. I know you do. And it will, like, suck the life out of me. It drains me. It takes the sparkle out of my eyes. I'm not as social. I'm not as fun. I don't laugh as much because I feel like if I'm too much, they get scared, well, you know? Well, because you have such a big personality and you're so secure in yourself and in Jesus that it takes a very strong man that's going to be able to handle you. You know what it is. What? You can't date boys. I know, but I and would love to... the same goes for me. I know. Listen, this is for Ariane Ange. Yeah, I would love... I, w- I mean, my requirement really should be I, w- I can't date anyone less than 10 years older than me. What? But I think like 10 years is a good age difference. Yeah. But... They're all married. If they know Jesus, there's no 35-year-olds who are yeah, out is. here. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. There's, yeah, there is. Yeah, my pastor with tattoos is somewhere out there. He doesn't actually have to have tattoos, but he needs to be hot. It's so funny he how needs to be hot. Angela and I have the exact opposite of what we like. If we're going to talk about looks-wise, I tend to go for the... I like a, like a nice classic man. Like a nice all-American classic man, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like a, 
that's what I that's what I like. I or think ath- that's perfect for athletic, you. Athletic. Um, I yeah. I want a guy who works with his hands and who's never taken a selfie in his life. I always like go back to Jesus. Jesus carried the cross, but he also was felt feelings and cried. Mm. He was assertive, but he also asked questions. You know, like it's, yeah. there's got to be a balance. I want somebody who will literally protect me and beat someone's butt if they need to, but also will sit there with compassion and ha- just just like a good-hearted man. That's what a true man is. There yeah. has to be that dichotomy. It's the same thing with feminine women too. There's always a dichotomy. Yeah. There's a there's a softness and a strength. Yeah. And for men, being masculine is being able to beat someone's butt. You know, maybe not physically, but like being a protector and like doing what he needs to do to protect his family but then also being soft enough to like be able to tend to his wife's feelings and like to be a good like loving father to his kids like there's got to be that dichotomy yeah how do you handle being alone on a day that celebrates love I think in general and this just doesn't go for um Valentine's Day we have to be around people people that love us, people of hope, people that love Jesus, people that encourage us, people that make us better. We just, the one thing about me this past year and a half is that I fought for friendships. I fought for community and it changed my life. It made me a better person. And so, you know, we, we, Having a partner isn't going to make you feel whole. It's okay that we're single. You have two sisters here that are single and are living their best life. Guys, girls, sisters, brothers, it's okay. It is. Be encouraged. Be just, just, it's all going to come to you at the right time. Remember what I said? God has an appointed time for everyone. It's the truth. He has a time for everyone. You're not too old. You're not, you know, it's it's okay. Live in this moment. Don't waste it. Be present. Serve people. Um, live your life right now because that time is going to come where you are going to have a partner and you're not going to be fully available for just yourself and for Jesus. So focus on that right now and yeah. enjoy it because you don't want to waste time stressing. There's no reason to stress. Jesus has got you. He's going to take care of you. He knows the desires of your heart, and he's going to fulfill those. Mm. Okay? Mm. I promise. It's okay. It's really okay. It's honestly more okay than you think it is. And if we can be fine single when we've been in long-term relationships forever, (laughs) you guys can do it too. Yeah. Um, We kind of answered this a little bit, but what do you think about dating while young since marriage might be so far away? And just back to what we said earlier that like, I don't know, like relationship experience is such a beautiful thing, but I'm also getting to a place. And this is just something I'm workshopping within myself that I'm like, I don't know if you're supposed to be in all these long-term relationships and go through all these breakups. I think that you know pretty quickly whether you want to marry someone or not, at least within a year. I really don't think you need more than a year. And so... I don't know if you need to be in all these year-long relationships. What to do when you have the biggest crush on him, but again, you know he's not good? I mean, I think you know what to do, and I think you just answered your own question Mm. when you said, but he's not good. Bye. How to fall in love with Jesus, how to stay in love with Jesus. Well... After I had many encounters where he rescued me from and comforted me when I was in isolation and I and he showed me just unwavering love time after time after time, I then really when I then really learned about him, which was reading the Bible, that's when I really just Mm. understood him. Mm. And that's when I became so in love with him. And building an intimate relationship with him. And that goes for even in your prayer life. When I pray and I'm talking to him like he's just my father. Mm. How do you fall in love with Jesus? How do you fall in love with people? You spend time with them. You get to know them. You listen to them. You listen to what they have to say. You put in the effort. You put in the time. The more When you spend so much one-on-one, face-to-face, intimate loving, intentional time with someone, it's hard not to fall in love. And then how do you stay in love? Just how you stay in love with people, effort, 
pursuing them, yeah. trying, yeah. being intentional every single day, communication. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Listen to Jesus and then talk to him. Prayer, just like really, like just like how you do it with people. If you fall off in a friendship or in a relationship and you stop putting in effort, like the relationship is going to suffer because of it. It's the same thing with Jesus. Yeah, I always say my friend to my friends that are just coming to Jesus, um, because they're like, man, he just keeps coming through for me. I'm seeing so many miracles. This is amazing. I say, open that Bible. Wait till you start to get to mm. know him. That's when your world is going to change. Yeah. I just hope you guys know that whatever season you're in, whether you're in a relationship or you're single, you're in this season for a reason. Yeah. And just go with it. Don't try to fight against it. Don't try to force things. Just let Jesus do what he do. Just let Jesus do what he does best. Let him work it all out for you. Don't try to rush anything either. And um, you know me, I'm, I, I'll i say one because it's Valentine's Day and it's a love weekend. I just want to know that we're always praying for you guys and your hearts and, and anyone who's going through a broken heart right now, it's going to be okay. I promise you, and he is going to turn it around for you, and you are going to be on the other side of this, and he is going to rise you up bigger than you can even imagine. I lived it. You have to trust me on this. And in the meantime, he's going to make you stronger and wiser, and he's building you, and he's developing you because he chose you, mm. okay? So hang on because you have no idea what's on the other side so of the pain that you're in. Get ready and get excited because it's going to be good. I love when you do that. It's like my, mo it's like, it's just like a hug from mommy <laughs> when you do that. It's so, you are, you have this gift of encouragement and I get to experience it every day of my life. And it's like the, aunt, it's like the biggest blessing of being your best friend is that like, it just works. Like you might not even think you're doing anything, but when you encourage people, like it really, it, it's so encouraging. Thank you. I swear. I love you. I love you so much. I just want to say also, you guys, just get close to Jesus. Who even cares about romantic love? Jesus is all that matters. Please read your Bibles. You guys get in the word. It's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that it's matters. Insane. Please seek Jesus first. The rest will come to you, I promise. And that includes your person. Thank you. We love you guys so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious towards you. May he turn his face to you and give you peace. So much peace and so much love. May Jesus pour his love into your hearts right now in Jesus' name. We adore you guys. We love you so much, you guys. God bless you. I love 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 you